Hello, this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem! Let's clean up the rest of the pirates at Galder. Starting with this guy, let's see, we'll need 8 attack power to finish that guy off. So I think Gordon can get the job done with his regular bow for a change. Although, it's not 100% accurate. If I miss the first shot, I'll probably get the second one. Okay. There you go! I knew you could do it. One of the nice things about this game is that if you miss with a weapon, you'll... It won't count against your durability, which I suppose makes logical sense. I mean, if you didn't hit anything with it, you're not going to, like, dull the blade or something like that. So, okay, let's see. With the Cavalier, yeah, we'll just have Marth finish him off with the Rapier. There's actually quite a few weapons throughout the game that deal more damage to certain job classes. It's just that Marth is the only one who can equip the Rapier, but there's plenty of others that are pretty good that I'll be putting to use. Okay, and then the last guy, yeah, they're trying to get across the sea to the fort there. We're not gonna let that happen. Let's uh, finish them off before they can do that. I'm not really worried about the thief to the right over there. They'll come to us sooner or later. So, for now, I want to keep on moving to the left there with most of my party members. Oh yeah, whenever you reduce the number of enemies to four or less in a battle, the music changes to something a little more positive and upbeat. I like that. So let's see, I want to try and lure those hunters over here. So let's see, let's put Abel up front there. I won't be in a range of their attacks, so they might just sit there, but since I, I'm in movement range of them, or with Abel there, they might come out and attack us. Usually they do, but maybe not always. Okay, so yeah, let's get you right there. Let's see, I might want to move some of my fighters and pirates further away so that they don't scare the thief anymore. I would like the thief to come out on their own, and I'll just use the upper left village as live bait to get them out. It'll work, eventually. But yeah, I don't want to have Sita go all the way over there just to take out a thief. I mean, eventually I will, but when they come to us. Okay, so with Jagan, I want to move him right here because that'll put him just barely in range of the armory. But I don't want to move him, like, down here because that might aggro the hunters down here instead of walking into my ambush that I'm preparing there. Let's see, with Kane, I'm going to move him right there just in case one of these guys does decide to go down the lower path, so that way he can block them off here somewhere. And let's see, as far as healing goes, let's see, Marth, well, he could use a bit of healing, but let's see how uh, the boss looks. Okay, so he's got a hand axe, which is similar to the javelin, except it's an axe type weapon. It has a range of one or two, however you want to use it there, but otherwise it's worse than a javelin in every way. It only has five might, a weight of nine, so this guy's gonna have no attack speed in combat, and it has a base accuracy of 60%. So just like every other axe in the game, it's pretty terrible. I wouldn't use it, but if you are using an axe wielder, I guess that's your only way of dealing range damage. Okay, so as far as their attack power goes, 8 and 5. And then, what do you got? Oh yeah, we've got more than enough HP left to survive that. Really, if you know how to do the damage calculations, you don't need to use a healer all that often. I mean, you've got the forts that can help you out, and you know exactly what the enemies can do. It's not like the damage calculations are that complicated. 
All right, good, good. That was a best case scenario with them moving there. I didn't want them to move like right over here because that would have made things a little more difficult. Okay, so with Jagan, let's head on over to the armory. And I would like to buy an iron sword for the next chapter. There is another shop in the next chapter that does sell iron swords, but it's inconveniently located. So I'd rather just get one now in advance. And you notice they sell most of the axes in the game here, including the hammer that is considered an axe type weapon. As such, we are not gonna be buying any of those. So yeah, we'll just grab that. And then, let's see, let me show you something here. So, right next to the armory there, we got a new location. A pyramid! No, no, it's a, probably a tent, but it's a convoy. And it's basically the bank, vault, storage system of the game, whatever you want to call it. So, since everyone only has a maximum of four inventory slots, this helps you expand that somewhat. So that's pretty nice. I don't have anything I want to use that for at the moment, but yeah, I just thought I'd show you that it's there. And if you want to see what's in your convoy, you don't have to go all the way over there and look it up. You got that right in the menu over here. Okay, so now I want to block off these hunters so that they can't go after Jagan. Okay, and then you can block that one off. And then with Marth, I think he'll be able to get just barely in range of the village there. So we'll just put you right there. And in order to prevent both hunters from being able to attack him, I'll just move Draug right here. And only one of them will be able to attack Marth then. I don't want to attack the hunters yet, though. You'll, you'll see why. I want to show you guys something here. It'll waste a round of combat, but that's okay. Alright, so yeah, got you there. Let's move Gordon as far as we can. I'm pretty sure the hunters won't attack him, since he could actually counterattack. But just in case, I'll equip a crossbow, or a, what is that, a bow gun, anyway. Okay, and then, yeah, let's get you over there. We don't need healing just yet. Let's see, with Sita, let's move her right there. That'll be just barely out of range of both of the hunters. And we'll just keep on waiting for the thief to come to us. There is another little house down there that I'll visit eventually. I want to deal with the hunters first. There you go. Very nice. Okay, so, all right, go after Agman. That's fine. Ow! Quit it. Oh, what's this? Well, sometimes when an enemy attacks you, you get a little dialogue there, apparently. Someone who knows Princess Sita. So, let's check the guy out there. So, this is Castor the Hunter. And, yeah, he's got some pretty decent stats. Now, notice that he has a luck stat of zero at that point. I think pretty much every enemy in the game has a luck stat of zero. I, I forget if there's like one or two that have not zero, but, well, in any case, he's got zero. So, yeah, by the guy attacking you, that's how you're supposed to know, hey, let's talk to the guy with Sita there. You don't have to get that dialogue, though, in order to be able to talk to the guy. You can just go right there, but I just wanted to show you, here's how you're supposed to know that. So just take Sita, move right next to him, talk, and listen to the epic music. Oh, so he's from the same kingdom as you, huh? Nuts. Well, I guess you're a host. What is the elixir cost 9,000 gold? No, nah. no, nah, that's another game of yours. But, uh, oh, well, let's not be hasty here, Sita. That's my money. I don't think she's actually using my money for that, though. I think it's just for storyline purposes. But in any case, hey, all right. More party members with Castor, who's pretty good, actually. I'm not going to be using him in my final lineup, 
but he was like borderline. I mean, he is pretty good. So yeah, you see, we didn't lose any money out of that or anything. And now that Castor has joined the party, yeah, his luck stat is different. Whenever there's an enemy that could potentially join your party, once they do, it the game randomizes their starting luck stat from, I think, zero to seven. So, yeah, pretty average there. Not, nothing extraordinary. I don't really care about the luck stat that much, especially for a hunter. There's some job classes where I might care about that more than others. But, yeah, it really just affects your critical hit rate and, what was the other thing? Your magic evasion and curse weapons later on. But, otherwise, yeah, it's not an extraordinary there, but yeah, he's not going to be a long-term asset, but he is still pretty good. I just prefer snipers over hunters, but if you want to use him, hey, go nuts. I mean, he's pretty good, actually, at what he does. He's got decent stat growths, for a bowman, anyway. Okay, so with this guy, let's see, we need, let's see, 12 attack power would kill the guy, so I need something less than that, so we got... Uh, what is that? Okay, so we got the... Yeah, I gotta attack them with less attack power. So, yeah, let's just go with that. And see what we can do there. So, as long as I don't get a crit, yeah, we can finish the guy off there. Very nice. Okay, and then what else do you got there? Okay, so, hmm. Oh, right, the, uh, the other guy there. Okay, let's have Gordon finish that guy off. Wait, let me see their, their speed stat. Okay, so they've got, or not their speed stat. Okay, so they got a combat speed of four with just the regular bow, and so do I. So I have no way of getting two hits on the guy. So I think I'm going to use the bow gun to guarantee my accuracy there. But otherwise, I think we'll be fine. There you go. That's about as good as it's going to get. Okay, and then let's see. I'll have C to go after the thief soon. For now, let's just go after the village there with Marth. See what's going on over there. Oh, okay, what happened to her? Did she get sucked into a black hole? No, nah, no, nah, that's another game of yours. Wouldn't be the first black hole I've encountered. Whoa, well that sounds dangerous, but I, I suppose that's her job as a cleric or something. So, okay, yeah. Hey, all right. Sounds good to me. See what we can do. Okay, so let's see. Let's actually have Abel go down there and visit the house or whoever's living there. Oh, okay. So that's another one of those weapons that deals more damage to certain job classes. But yeah, being an axe type weapon, it's pretty terrible. I'm not going to be bothering with that at all. Okay, so we got that bow gun in the previous chapter. So let's get that over to Castor. Probably won't have him do much attacking, but maybe to deal a little chip damage there every now and then. Get you going over there. And let's see. I'm going to keep Kane somewhat close by, just in case I need some help with the thief there. But otherwise, yeah, let's uh, go up here, follow up with Marth there in the event that I do need to use some healing. I don't think so. As long as we kill the boss in one go. Okay, so yeah, I need to get everyone in range of the boss first there. So let's get you over there. Maybe get a little healing there. Mars can't quite make it there. Just keep everyone at least three tiles away from the boss so he can't attack you with the uh what is it with the hand axe there okay so with the thief let's see eight and two so i don't think i have anyone who could deal or who has 10 attack power or less besides 
Theta, and I want her to kill the thief. So, let's see, I'll need someone slow to attack them just once. So let's see, your combat speed is seven with the iron sword. What do you got? You got six with the iron sword, so yeah, that'll do. Get you over there. I'm using Jaken for more chip damage than I would think I would. Or usually I don't use him that much. I mean, not that it matters, really, who is softening up enemies for others to kill. For the long-term party members that I plan to use. But, you know, just seems to be more conveniently located here. Okay, yeah, let's uh, finish the guy off there. Well, not perfect accuracy. The thief does have a lot of speed, so that also factors into their evasion. But, uh, all right, got him. Okay, and then, yeah, let's get you up there. So I want Reese up there to potentially heal uh, Marth in the event that we miss against the boss a lot, which can sometimes happen. So, I mean, I'm going to have everyone try to gang up on the guy, but if we just keep on missing over and over and over again, that could become problematic there. Let's see, I'm not going to have Sita get involved against the boss. I think she'll be... She's fine on experience. I would rather give the experience to Marth or Gordon. So, let's, uh, let's have Marth get things started there. He has yeah, more than enough HP to survive an attack from the boss. But we'll be careful there. Not. So yeah, with that uh, what is it? Terrain effect from the castle there. He's got like 30% evasion. And he can regenerate HP from the castle so that's why you gotta kill the guy in one go or else. So, let's see what else we can do. One of the nice things about, about Bowman is that even if I completely surround the boss, I can still get in some ranged hits with them. So far, my accuracy is not doing so good, but I suppose 50-50 is okay. Could be better. Okay, how are you doing? Hmm... Well, the boss shouldn't be able to kill you, huh? 13 minus 6? Yeah, you're fine. You've got more than enough. But actually, let's see. Why don't we have... Let's see. I know Kane has some pretty good strength there. Let's have him go after the boss and see what we can do. So I'm going to have Gordon try to make the kill here. But it depends on how many... Or how many hits I can actually get in. And so far, I'm doing a bit below average on the number of hits getting through. Okay, so... Yeah, we still need to get a bit more in there. How about we get Abel up there? And I'm going to get Jagan over there eventually because I'm going to want to do some minor inventory management there with him. Whoa! Uh, oh! Okay, okay, you, you got the guy. You, uh, yeah, don't kill the guy. I want Gordon to do that. And I'm going to use my bow gun for the best accuracy that we can get. Hopefully, one of my two shots will go through. Uh-oh. It's not good. Okay, whew! If I missed that shot there... I would have had to have Reese heal up Marth because he wouldn't survive another hit. But, uh, oh right, for Davidium we get a steel sword, an upgrade to an iron sword there. And what do we get here? Eh, nothing extraordinary, but at least I have the weapon levels for the strongest viable bow in the game now, even though that's not really important for quite a while, actually. We have plenty of time to get enough weapon levels for the characters that I care about. But, uh, okay, so we got that going. 
And then what I want to do is take the seal sword. I want to give it to Jagan there. It's pretty much outright better than a lance with eight might, but it still only has like 80% accuracy. So I didn't use a ton of steel swords, but they can uh, be useful in some situations. Okay, we got all that taken care of. By the way, you don't have to kill all the enemies in a battle in order to win. All you have to do is seize the castle or whatever the objective is there. I'm just killing all enemies to satisfy my bloodlust. Oh, who are you? Are you the, the same guy as the villager over there? I mean, you don't look like a king to me. But, uh, alright. Oh, okay, we're not in Aurelis. I thought we were already there. But, uh, okay. Whoa. Is that, like, supposed to be some sort of pun on soothsayers or something? I don't know. But, in any case... Well, we better watch out for them. Whoa, Navarre, huh? Well, we'll remember that for later, viewers. But, uh... Yeah, we'll do... What we can! But can we rescue Lena from the Soothsires? Find out next time on Let's Play Fire Emblem! This is H.G. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day!